This is a shortened version of a seminar that I put on at Washington University. We're talking about transfer learning and how you use that particularly with deep learning. This is me, Jeff Heaton, various things. Oh look, 41,000 YouTube subscribers. Guess what? There'll be one more if you subscribe. There'll be one less if you unsubscribe, but don't do that, don't do that. So first, let's just talk about Let's put this into context. The Bitter Lesson. This is kind of interesting. This is by Rich Sutton from DeepMind. He's kind of the, one of the foremost guys in reinforcement learning. And it talks about really don't try to solve compute power problems. Don't try to solve how to deal with taking shortcuts to deal with shortcomings in the amount of processing power you have because Moore's law is coming to save you. Moore's law shows that the number of transistors in a chip doubles about every two years. So if you look back on the field of say computer vision, there is a graveyard littered with the bones of all kinds of clever feature engineering algorithms and other things that learned how to take computer vision and make it easier for the machines to understand. Similarly, when IBM was able to beat Kasparov with Deep Blue, they used all kinds of clever algorithms to try to use human knowledge, human intuition about all kinds of end games, beginnings, openings, other things in chess to try to build a superior chess computer and they did it. And then Google with AlphaZero went and blew everything away where that machine is able to learn in like 40 hours, I think, how to play chess better than the, the best chess computer in the world. So using this reinforcement learning and using just raw compute power, they are able to really achieve great things. And they didn't have to spend a lot of time creating very custom approaches to how to play chess, how to play Go, how to do computer vision. Basically just optimize a generalizable algorithm that scales really well and throw compute power at it as that improves and improves and improves. Can enough compute power really move any mountain? Well, I particularly enjoyed the movie Wandering Earth, but yeah, throw enough rockets on it. In theory, you could turn the Earth into a Death Star and fly it around. And if you look at the logical kind of extreme of this sort of thing, then I don't know, compute power, will it eventually just solve the traveling salesman problem where you just throw enough compute at power at it, you can solve a 10,000 city, which we don't, I think, even have numbers hardly big enough for a problem because factorial is really difficult mountain to climb. Or you may reach a point where you simply, if you have enough compute power, if you have infinite compute power, just random, random generate any program of some length so long as you have a way to evaluate it, and those monkeys at the keyboard will eventually type Shakespeare. Obviously, those are extreme examples, but the amount of compute power is making these generalized algorithms really, really powerful. So it's good to stand on the shoulders of giants, and that's what you're doing. You're taking these pre-trained models and starting from that point. It's often criticized of deep learning that you have to show a 10,000 cats, 10,000 dogs, or a million of each, and it learns to tell the difference between a cat and a dog. When a young child sees the first cat or their first dog, maybe a couple, a handful of them, they pretty much got it. But the thing is, if you showed an infant a cat and a dog, it's, it's not going to learn it because there's no built-in knowledge there already that it's building upon. You don't start from scratch every time you learn something new. When I learned to drive a car, I was probably using a lot of different skills that I learned, like, I don't know, video games, riding a bike, other various things. You don't always start from scratch. And before transfer learning, we always kind of started from scratch. So we stand on the shoulders of giants. The bitter lesson, though, is those giants will eventually become 
small compared to the to the new giants. This is Gulliver's Travels. Most people just see him visiting the Lilliputians, but then he goes on to to visit other islands where he meets giants then and he's the he's the small individual. So always be ready for those giants to shift and that's what some of what transfer learning does. It lets you just spend your time training something on top of it. Now when to use transfer learning most common applications are computer vision and natural language processing and kind of pre-baked feature engineering. So it's your if you're using embedding layers in natural language processing where it basically takes words and transform those words into like 300 length vectors and other things, that's essentially a form of feature engineering or dimension reduction or explosion depending on how you think about it. I don't know if a five letter word out to a 300 number vector that's kind of feature expansion, but it causes similar words to be grouped together and that that is a form of transfer learning. Now, what exactly is transfer learning? I really see several overlapping technologies. I just have three of them here. There's feature engineering. And if you think of feature engineering, it is really a form of dimension reduction because here we're looking at seminar appeal and I'm taking three other variables or PhD comics is taking three other variables and reducing them into just one variable it's essentially a, a feature reduction. It's also feature engineering. Then you've also got transfer learning, which is essentially saying that this equation that we had here, we can rewrite that as like all the weights of a neural network or something. Some neural network learned how to do this transformation a long time ago, say, and you transfer that either as an embedding layer or as some of the bottom layers closest to the input layer of your neural network. So all of these three technologies really go pretty pretty hand in hand. They're almost different different faces of the same concept. So let's look at ResNet. This is one of many many types of neural network that you can pull into Keras or PyTorch or the others and start from. I'm showing three different ones. We'll look at just the, the, the 34 layer residual. This is using these skip layers to allow, I won't even get into that. I could do a whole video on that. Actually, I do have a whole video on that. So definitely watch that. Subscribe to the channel so you'll see all the latest on, on these kind of things. And look how, look how big it is. It extends onto yet another slide. Oh, I'm lying. It extends to yet another slide. So all those layers are teaching it more abstraction. What is a corner? What are eyes? What is fur? What do shadows mean? All these kind of things were learned. And you can transfer that into your own neural network. So looking at an example of how I would do this, here I have the pre-trained neural network. And I'm going to take those pre-trained layers. Look at that top one. We've got the softmax layer. There's a thousand neurons there and it's fully connected to that last dense layer. I'm just going to shave that off. Those thousand classes, those are the thousand classes that are in, I believe, ImageNet that a lot of these are trained for. And it learns how to classify those thousand images. What if I want to learn to classify something that's not even in that list? Well, I put on my new neural network. Now, I did do a softmax 1000 just in this example. I could just put three onto there if I wanted to and that's a more likely case. So you're going to take all of that learning below you. That's essentially feature engineering. It is taking all of those images and turning it into a vector of features that are going to go into that final softmax layer that you have, or go ahead and put a linear layer on there if you want to do some sort of regression. I have an example in my Kaggle competitions for my course where I have them count paper clips on a paper. Transfer learning helps there. I guarantee you there's no paper clip in ImageNet, but it learned what the, the corners are and other things. And that allowed the students to build more accurate models by using transfer learning. Let's do a demonstration of this. Will it fall? Look at this block building. This is a stable block building. If I run physics, look, no problem. This is an unstable block building. See the missing 
blocks there right underneath these two green layers that don't come together. Let's run physics. Oh, look, it fell over. That's a Kaggle competition that I gave my students. Now, in these off-the-shelf models, there is nothing that is in there. I mean, most of these are trained on ImageNet, and that's mostly animals. But yet, it, it has a lot of corners and other things. If you look at the models that I provided for the students, I gave them a base model, which only gets a log loss of about 0.65. That is training it from scratch, building your own layers and trying to construct this. If you look at the other example that I provide later, where I even do feature importance, you are able to get a much, much better score around a, I think a 0 0.05 log loss. And some of these contributed notebooks in this Kaggle competition have done even better. That transfer learning lets you get there very quick. You don't have to be your own giant. You can stand on the shoulders of giants and construct this much more accurate model without having to, to train it, even though it's blocks, which I don't think there's even a, necessarily a single building block in the mobile net neural network that I used as the basis for this one. And then if you look a little further down too, I also show you how to do feature importance and images. Feature importance is kind of tricky, but it shows you see that red blob is near where the fault in this building is. And it's detecting that that's the important part for detecting that this building will in fact fall over, or at least that top part will fall off of it. Another thing that you should definitely look at is Hugging Face. I will be doing some videos on this. You can transfer in very advanced natural language processing neural networks right into your Python code. You can run this in Colab. It's, it's great. Really like some of the stuff by Hugging Face. I really saw good examples of what they could do at the NVIDIA GPU Technology Conference, GTC 2020, that I attended virtually. Thanks, COVID 2020. Really want to go to an actual conference soon. Other sources of models, Kira's and PyTorch both have these built in. You can just transfer them in. There's 20 or so in Kira's. And then also the NVIDIA NGC Cloud is a great source of really advanced models that most of which use GPUs in some way can be put into your own programs. I mean, they have models that are able to produce audio, understand audio, natural language processing. Have a look at these transfer learning models and see what you can do. I'm, I'm working on a video where I show you some of the neatest things that you can do with transfer learning. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in this sort of thing, please subscribe to my channel, click the bell, and give me a like if you like this video. See you later.